Welcome everyone. Uh, today we have Andy Starnes from Insight Training covering a, a super important topic, one that is uh, often undertrained and overlooked. That is the topic of investigative modes. Uh, Seek, ours is called survey mode, and Andy is gonna help explain the value, hence the name, the value of survey mode. Uh, with that, we'll turn it over to you, Andy, and then also if you guys have questions, go ahead and put those in the chat and I'll try and either get them answered right away back to you or we can try and, and circle back and, and answer some questions at the end of the webinar. So, Andy, you're on, sir. Thank you, Brent. So, we're going to get started. Uh, those of you who may have not met me before, i um, put my bio up real quick, but we will dive right into the material instead of wasting time talking about me. Uh, most important person in the picture there is uh, my family, my daughter, uh, my wife and I, and Emma live here in Shelby, North Carolina. I have a uh, instructor cadre of 14 instructors, and we travel quite extensively teaching thermal imaging. And if you're interested, we have a collegiate program now for firefighters backed by WKU and Kentucky Thermal Institute. This uh, program is loaded with QR codes, so warning, keep your cell phone out. If you watch the replay, you can also view them as well. Uh, so let's talk about what we're here to learn about. So currently, SEEK offers various products, but the new survey mode application is something that some of you may or may not have seen. So what we've done is added, basically put everything in one slide here so you can review the Attack Pro, the Attack Pro Plus, and the new Attack Pro VRS. There's three webinars there explaining them at the bottom of the page. This is your educational overview of the instruction manual of the devices. Uh, widest field, field of view on the market, only product that offers mixed gain mode that does what it does, has a very low thermal sensitivity and a built-in flashlight. Now with survey mode, you have the best of both worlds. You have the, uh, as my friend called it, the smooth bore nozzles of thermal imaging cameras. Very difficult to mess this thing up. And then you have an application mode that is very valuable for investigation purposes. And uh, this great picture is from Michael Rauch uh, from the International uh, Tech Academy we did in IFRT in Germany. These are the current products available. Um, so some of them offer survey modes, such as the Fire Pro 200, 300, and the Attack Pro VRS. We're going to talk about the value of that feature today, uh, but you can check out thermal.com if you want to learn more about those. So, why is this important? As a retired firefighter, one of the things that I remember most vividly was not the fires, but was the total amount of calls we ran that was absolute nonsense. We ran a ridiculous amount of false alarms. I don't know about if you are familiar with that, but according to the U.S. Fire Administration, firefighters responded to 1.3 million fire calls in 2021, but ran 2.9 million false alarms. The only call that exceeded that was calls for lift assist, which is probably your favorite call as well. 2% of those false alarms were actual fires, 58,000 incidents. So when they say get dressed because it could be the real thing, it's probably in your best interest to not uh, sit there casually and not have your gear on the way to the fire alarm. However, the amount of time spent investigating these incidents, whether it's odors of electrical, smell something burning, just a, a false alarm from a smoke detector going off due to dust or steam in the hallway, is exceedingly great. Lots of companies staying on scene, trying to find the problem in these big, big buildings when they could have a real problem like this picture here, which was the largest fire my department saw in 25 years. So we can use an investigative mode, such as survey mode, to find these issues faster, get companies back in service for you know, more immediate problems, such as actual fires, cardiac arrest, and saving lives. So here's the thing about investigation modes that some of you may or may not be aware of. This is not a new concept. Industrial cameras have used these type of features for decades, and fire service cameras added them in slowly to kind of copy what was going on in the industrial market. You may be familiar with Bullard's electronic thermal throttle, which is a great feature. FLIR K, the XX series search and rescue mode, also a great feature. Some of the older cameras, Drager's thermal scan, Argus size up mode or hotspot cold spot tracker. Scott X380 had a hotspot cold spot tracker. And now you have the Seek uh, thermal survey mode. This is not an exhaustive list, but just some of the ones that we commonly see that if you already have these cameras, this might be something that benefits you. You can apply the same concepts we talk about today to those cameras as well. Here's the little disclaimer. If you're gonna use an investigative mode color palette, make sure you understand what its actual contraindications are. A lot of these are what they call single gain or max dynamic range of a very, very tight temperature span. 
So in this case, survey mode, the max dynamic range or temperature span is zero to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or zero to 150 degrees Celsius. That means if you go in a high heat environment, you will experience something known as saturation or what old firefighters called whiteout. New cameras don't white out due to heat. They saturate, you see a massive amount of color. If you remember our previous webinars, if you see white out on a camera, it's usually due to an end user behavior like a failure to wipe the lens, moisture on the screen, radio frequency interference, or other cameras that may have issues when they're switching between gains. This particular picture here shows you where survey mode is probably not the best option because you have a lot of heat blocking out a lot of detail. Grayscale and color are both immensely important. Grayscale gives you diagnostic capabilities of layout. Colorization gives you superheated areas and tells you what where things are. However, it's not uniform throughout the manufacturer industry. Different cameras colorize at different points based on their programming and different pixel percentage requirements. Let me say that again, different pixel percentage requirements. I know that's a mouthful, but you need to understand not every camera that says it shows color at 300 degrees shows it at 300 degrees. And that may not sound fair, but the reason is, is one may require more pixels than the other. One may do it differently with smaller pixel pitch. One may have it where it shows up in high and low sensitivity. So simplify the process, ladies and gentlemen. You're in a very dynamic, challenging environment. Make it simple. You have a fire mode. You have an investigative mode. You got two options go to work. So it cannot be overemphasized when you're using any of these application modes that you do not use the spot temperature for diagnostic purposes in a fire. Spot temperature was removed per NFP 1801 2021 standard due to it was listed as a contributing factor in three line of duty deaths. Three. And it's an incident causing problem over and over again for firefighters using an overhaul, reading that number instead of reading the whole environment and learning what non uniform or abnormal thermal signatures are. If you want to learn more about the danger of the spot temperature, check out our article in the bottom right hand corner. Because as this picture shows, it's clearly hotter than 126 degrees Fahrenheit in this room because red is over 300 and those are apparent temperatures which are estimates we are not seeing all the measurements that are in here we're seeing long wave infrared radiation we're not seeing gas temperatures we're seeing a part of the infrared spectrum so let's talk about why this can help you thermal situational awareness is important it's been often overlooked and neglected and in my opinion just completely forgotten about by most fire departments the two most uh, common areas that are not trained on are behavioral health and thermal imaging and I see that consistently. And here's a problem with that. You hand them a camera, you don't tell them what it means. Now you expect them to differentiate 256 shades of grayscale in one image and which shade of gray is hotter. Under stress, when seconds count, firefighters miss things in grayscale. My old school thermal imaging instructor friends love grayscale and think it's the best thing out there. I don't disagree with that. However, when you're teaching firefighters to make decisions under quick you know, stressful environments, you can't expect them to study a screen when seconds equate to life or death. Many manufacturers fail to consider that the challenges of these smoke-filled environments don't always produce a pretty picture like this, and trying to differentiate what shade of gray is hotter can be counterintuitive, contraindic contraindicative, and cause you to miss things like convection currents, which could cause you to get injured or killed. Every one of these slides that has a QR code may take you to somewhere interesting such as videos resources please make sure you check those out here's an example of the value of survey mode one of the problems we're having in the fire service today is firefighters are constantly arguing on social media instead of going outside and training and learning the difference that why they should cool or shouldn't cool moving down a hallway i would encourage you to think about what a human victim is experiencing who doesn't have the luxury of ppe when you look down this hallway in survey mode and see anywhere upwards of 300 degrees at the ceiling and how much heat's moving up those stairs to an unprotected child who may be trapped in that bedroom versus when we flip this to TI basic. Right here, the average untrained firefighter would have no problem opening the nozzle and cooling this environment based on what they see. But when we switch it to TI basic, where this camera shows color at 302 degrees, it doesn't look as threatening. And to someone under the protection of three layers of a specialized garment, you don't feel pain till way, way late, such as 500 degrees, cumulative heat transfer after five minutes, person is dead by that point. Make sure you understand that early colorization of thermal threats can be used to identify these problems, fix these things, locate the fire, mitigate areas that you may not see or pick up with a standard camera. It's not an always or never, but when you use this device, if you use an application mode such as this, it can help you find problems you may miss. So here's some examples of how you could use it. We can use it in size up, making entry fire attack like you saw there search 
overhaul, false alarms, down power lines, lost person searches, and such as this car fire here after the fire is extinguished, air quotes. A friend of mine, an instructor, took this video. You can see inside in grayscale, things look hot, but I don't know how hot. We go to survey mode with a couple clicks of the button, and you'll see the screen goes to that blue background, and then it colorizes areas starting 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius. Watch what happens when he comes back around the front of the car. Now, this doesn't mean you see everything. Obviously, vehicles and buildings and things of that nature have insulated properties. Look at the tire. You think it might need a little bit more water before you leave? Look at the engine compartment. I don't know about you, but I've experienced the dreaded word rekindle. And that's not a fun thing to explain when you leave something and you're supposed to put it out and you come back and it's burning again. And it usually burns worse the second time. So that's one example of how we can use such application. The other example is we have to be aware of what we don't see. The fact that cameras don't see anything, everything, they're not x-ray vision. However, a specialized investigative color palette such as survey mode, especially during overall, can really make a huge difference of areas you may miss. Keep in mind, if it's covered up by insulation or sealed up, you may not see anything with any camera. But in this case, when the wall's already been exposed in this older home, there's a big difference between the TI basic picture on the left and the survey mode picture on the right. Notice how much areas are colorized, pushing that 300 degree temperature point. You're pushing 300 degrees, it can catch back on fire. Understand that many devices on the market today fail to shake, show colorization until 302 degrees, 500 degrees, or higher. You may say, well, I don't understand why that's such a big deal. I reviewed 10 Maydays last year, and nine of them said the following in the after action review. Didn't see any color on the camera, and the camera said it was 100 degrees. Those are two very condemning statements. One, they didn't know what their camera was telling them. And by the way, they didn't wipe the lens on eight of these incidents. Two, they were reading the spot temperature. The spot temperature is basically a small measurement of a 12 inch square at a preset calibrated air conditioned warehouse when it was done. Not in a fire. You don't know what the distance of the target is. You don't know what the emissivity is. You don't know all the variables. Therefore, your camera can't adjust to it. It can be several hundred degrees off. These are qualitative devices that see heat. And we're looking for anomalies and things that are wrong. That's why low color or low temperature colorization color palettes such as investigative modes and survey mode are extremely useful. Think about working smarter, not harder. Make your life easier by using these two different application modes that are already out there, but this device, pretty simple. No buttons to push as far as toggling. You just set it, forget it. You don't have to adjust it up or down. You read the color bar, you make sure you're standing in line with the target, and you interpret it. And one of the things that I see consistently is fire departments are starting to see the value of using thermal imaging cameras in size up. Keep in mind that building science uh, inspectors and thermologists have been using thermal imaging cameras to inspect buildings for a long time, successfully to find problems. Florida just passed a law that all of their multi-occupancy buildings, such as hotels, have to be inspected by a thermographer by the end of 2025. That's 900,000 buildings that's gotta be inspected. Now you think about that, you're looking for a sideline job. They're gonna do that with an infrared camera to look for problems such as moisture intrusion, insulation problems, bad windows, all those things. We show up and knowing what I know about building inspectors, they only need between a 10 and 20 degree delta T or temperature differential to find a problem. Would you agree with me there's gonna be more than 20 degrees temperature difference between the inside of a building and the outside of the building if it's on fire? Yeah. Problem though is if my camera doesn't show color till late and doesn't have a good range, then I won't see anything but gray. And I don't know what non-uniform heat signatures look like because I'm not a trained demographer. So early colorization in size up can indicate where a problem might be within that building. Areas of heat transfer known as thermal bridging are extremely important for the incident commander, safety officer, RIT crew leader, anyone who is the decision maker i.e. the designated adult carrying one of these devices to know what they look like and what they mean. Heat transfer of an area where fire has been, where it's going, and areas that you may not be aware of are extremely important, such as this picture here as we're walking towards a burn building in uh, James City County, Virginia. You can see the convection currents exhausting from the second floor. When we go to TI Basic, we see a great grayscale image 
we're a good distance off. However, those three windows are just white to us. So as that white hot firefighter just came out of the burn room, we call that being a hothead because we're quite hot. So those are some advantages to that. Now let's look at a camera used during size up just in grayscale. This is your TI basic mode of your attack pro without survey mode. Great grayscale image, convection currents exhausting from the second floor of this basement fire, by the way, split level home, firefighter makes the 360, identifies the area where suppression efforts are already taken care of, taken, taken, um, taken care of. And when he starts to walk around the other side of the building, look at the non-uniform white thermal patterns. Those are called thermal bridge, and he points at it right there. That's where it's moving up the stairs, in between the platform construction, moving from top, from bottom to top. How much easier would that be if that was colorized? If you were hustling and people are screaming and seconds count, early color, colorization makes a huge difference. And I've already pre-uploaded numerous examples of survey mode videos to my YouTube channel. You can scan that QR code, go right to it, make your life easier. And you can learn how to do this because this firefighter is well-trained in thermography. Not every firefighter is. So if we change the, change the game and we're gonna do this in survey mode, now keep in mind, this is a training building. And we're gonna look at the difference outside and looking through the door towards the fire in survey mode. You can see the colorized areas of superheated areas. And you could tell right off the bat where the problem is, where the fire is going. And as he looks into the building, you can see the thermal layer is close to about 50%. We know that you know that would be damaging to a person's airway or their skin. So we'd wanna stop that. And we're walking around looking at the container from the outside. We can see the amount of heat transferring through an insulated steel container. It's a lot of heat on the exterior wall. Whatever you see on the outside could be as much as double on the inside, depending on the type of building, surface, insulated properties, voids, and the amount of heat. But it's much easier and beneficial to a firefighter to find the problem faster when seconds count. As Chief Ryan Malt says, when seconds count, we count seconds. So understand why this is valuable to you as a firefighter. But if you don't know what this means, it's just a pretty picture. So let's look at some explanations of this device and the application mode behind it. This is two pictures, TI basic at the bottom, survey mode at the top. We took an IFRT in Germany from my friend Stefan Feit's place. Uh, Stefan and his guys are in Orlando Fire Conference right now. And you can see the difference when they have knocked the fire back in the bottom image versus survey mode after the fire has been knocked back. You can see areas that still need to be cooled. This application mode, like I said, begins showing colorization at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or at 65 degrees Celsius for my friends overseas. However, like I said in the beginning, a disclaimer in high heat environments, it can saturate. So you need to know when to use it and when not to use it. A good friend of mine coined the phrase, these application modes could be used early or late in the fire incident, but not necessarily during the middle of the firefight when you have high heat. So I always like to start in this application mode and end in this application mode. Because typically when you get off the fire truck, you're walking towards the incident and you're remote from it. You're not stepping off the truck and stepping into the fire or the living room that's burning. You're having to work your way towards the incident and you need something to give you cues and clues to help you find it faster. This can do that. And for my search friends that are always concerned about the victim, which we all should be, I would encourage them to think about if we know the data about human skin, respiratory tract failure, burns, and all of that, and there are people still worried about steaming the victim, what's this floor going to do to an unprotected man, woman, or child? Look at that. Look at the amount of energy on that firefighter's coat. If the floor is pushing 300 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, we need to do something about it because your polyester pajamas that you probably place on your children are melting at that point. Make sure that we understand that per firefighter rescue survey, over 50% of the victims are found four foot and down. So they could be incapacitated laying on this floor. Survey mode makes you change the way you mitigate situations because you think about what's occurring to an unprotected civilian through the eyes of this camera versus differentiating grayscale. Shades of gray are great for diagnostic purposes and layout. But when I'm trying to determine how bad something is and what it's doing to someone who doesn't have the protection, I need an early warning that makes it simple and easy for me to understand. And this application mode does that without complicating it or give, having to worry about icons or anything like that. So keep that in mind when you use these features. Here's a great example of all my friends who like to do live fire training. 
sadly, I review a lot of after action reports from PPE manufacturers where firefighters are injured during training. Now, depending on what they're doing, in many cases, they're using a thermal engine camera that shows just grayscale. Colorization shows up late. If you look at TI basic on the right, the stairs versus survey mode on the left, watch their head. Where are they going? Into the convective flow path, the fires to the left going straight up the stairs, and that's where the vent inner search drills are occurring. So these, these are the instructors going to watch over firefighters. These are my instructors, therefore I can pick on us for doing this. As we like to say, we've done, done a lot of dumb things in the name of science. I want you to consider what that does to your face piece and how long you should really hang out in that environment. If the top of his helmet in this image right here at the back is glowing yellow, and that's not just from reflected energy, then what's that doing your two to three millimeter piece of plastic known as your face piece? Be aware that wearing PPE does not make us indestructible. They have defined limitations. And if you can't see in that environment, and you don't know how hot it is, and you're waiting on your feelings to tell you how hot it is, you're in a lot of trouble if you haven't taken our classes before to understand what the human body does at approximately 140 degrees, because that's when pain sensations go away. You go numb. So early colorization can also equate to my favorite, early water application. As an engine company guy, most of my career, and the big thing I loved was flowing water. I got in trouble for flowing water a lot of times because sometimes I flowed water in the wrong place. Uh, that's the true story. However, if I'm trying to find the fire, which you read is a common phrase listed in many NIOSH line of duty death reports, why wouldn't I want something that helps me find that problem faster and eliminate the surprise rapid fire development we read about in many of these reports? If you watch this video, this is also taken in Germany, you can see down the hallway and see the colorized areas at the top. But when we go to TI Basic, all we see is that yellow spot and gray and white moving across the ceiling. Granted, this is a beautiful grayscale image when it was in TI Basic, but when we're in survey mode, think about this. I don't know about many of you, but I, I'm not allowed to paint in my house because my wife is the best painter and I'm not. But if you paint a ceiling, you buy ceiling paint now, it goes on a contrasting color like purple, pink, or magenta, and it dries white. They do that for a reason, so you know what you already painted and the spots you may have missed. In this case, many firefighters, if they base their suppression mindset or paradigm, if you will, on this picture, they're going to open the nozzle late just because they don't believe that's a threat. Whereas right here, Mongo is going to open the nozzle and flow water down this hallway, and I am going to erase any heat in front of me. And as my friend Kyle Romaga says, I'm going to own this compartment before I go to the next one and anything wet isn't going to burn and isn't going to hurt me or the victims. It's going to be my space. As he says, I claim this area in the name of whatever fire department you work for and then you move to the next space and you cool it. This is a great tool to help you do that. I will warn you that many manufacturers will tell you not to use investigative color palettes in fire attack. I will quote another friend of mine, Rob Blasetti, who says the following, when we're doing our job as firefighters, I want you to just win. I don't care if that means cheating. I don't care if that means violating the rules of the instruction manual. I have particular incidents that I use some of these cameras, what manufacturers say not to do, and I have been very successful with it because we figured out ways that they don't know because they don't field test these devices in these environments very often. So now we can use it to our advantage in a low to moderate heat environment without saturation. We can use the reach of the screen to cool those areas and make that area tenable for anyone that may be in it. That's a win, ladies and gentlemen. And this is an example of survey mode versus TI basic and, and suppression efforts. In, in survey mode, you can see how much heat is still remaining there when they've cooled it briefly. And when we go to TI basic, there's still a lot of heat there. But one thing I challenge you on that most people don't recognize is if you look at the gray white pattern around the edges of the door here and the white pattern right there, I want to back this up and I want you to ask yourself, if you took a yellow and orange marker and you just simply color colored in the white areas, what would it look like? Would it look like that, that, or that? Because everything starts in grayscale and color is simply added to those areas. So if you are good and you start recognizing grayscale, like you should, then this is not as necessary as most people think. 
but most firefighters do not spend hours watching thermal imaging video like this weird guy does. So survey mode is a very beneficial feature to many firefighters across the globe. It can help you in many ways. And during suppression efforts, it can tell you whether you're being effective, areas that you may miss, and more importantly, what if this is an arson fire? Do they like, do they like fires in more than one place? Absolutely. Do I wanna be surprised that I have a fire in a knee wall or void or fires beneath me? No. So make sure you use the right application mode for you that helps you identify these problems quicker, safely, smarter, faster, and get the job done. Because I have this question in this presentation, I think about five times for a reason. Which one grabs your attention? That grayscale image on the left is beautiful. And to me, I know that's convection currents moving across that ceiling. And that's about a 50% thermal layer down that hall. There's a victim laying on the bottom right-hand corner. And I know the fire's down the hall to the left. I know the heat's moving around the corner and up the stairs. The laws of physics say that. High pressure, low pressure, hot to cold. Whereas if I look at the picture on the right, wow, I got a lot of work to do. Because now that's colorized those areas that were just in grayscale, starting at 150 and tells me, you know what? What I thought needed a little bit of water application may need a lot more. I'm not going to argue tactics, nozzles, ventilation, or anything with anybody anymore, but I'm going to simply argue this. The data shows that we're there to make a difference and save lives and property. And if you have a device that shows you more damage is occurring while you're moving and not doing anything about it, that's awful condemning to someone who just recorded that and plays that back in court. Think about that. Are your efforts mitigating the environment and making it better? Or are you simply crawling through as a well-educated passerby to get to the fire and put it out and still that entire compartment that space that box is full of heat and toxic gases that we didn't do anything really to make it better so use these application modes to diagnose the problem and enhance your strategies and tactics not simply guide you to the fire because here's one that really captures my attention if i'm looking up a set of stairs and i know there's people up there that picture on the left in survey mode that we took in james city county virginia really makes me think twice about not do anything about what's going on upstairs what should my tactics be that's up to you but those tactics should be to make that environment better or get that victim out of there i think a friend of mine lars axelson said it best you can strat you can take all the strategies and tactics and boil it down to two statements you remove the victim from the problem or remove the problem from the victim that's it you can argue everything else but which one's faster can i get the victim out of there or can i take the problem away and you make that decision based on your circumstances, your staffing, and the ability to mitigate that situation. This just gives you more information to do so. But you can see there's a big difference in the detail in grayscale as well. But I want to, you know, make survey mode better than TI basic or vice versa. They both have benefits and advantages in the proper context. So make sure you use it correctly and when you need it. And please make sure you understand the difference between firefighters who have perfect vision, which is not me, and firefighters who have colorblind issues. Make sure you ask your firefighter, do you have trouble seeing certain colors? If they do, you can do a colorblind test and help them differentiate colors the way they see them. And you can use that information so they can still use the device. That doesn't mean they can't use the camera. They just need someone to take the time to work with them and show them what those colors mean to them so they can interpret it really. So if you look at the other side of the stairs, in survey mode looking at that floor that's a big deal for somebody laying in that however a firefighter who scans too fast could miss those superheated areas or convection currents or may be overwhelmed by rapidly changing fire conditions because let's just be honest if you just looked at this picture right here and said wow that's bad versus you looked up here and now looked at the floor doesn't look that bad to you does it our perspective determines how we deal with things if our perspective says, man, that's hot and that's gonna hurt somebody and we should do something about it, then that will help us. And this type of application mode right here tells me that needs to be cooled. A lot of people will argue, say, well, that blocks out a lot of detail. I can't see what's going on. Well, let me ask you a question. If I see that's a threat, shouldn't I mitigate that threat immediately if that's hurting someone? Sure. And then if I had another firefighter behind me and TI basically could see somebody around the corner while I'm mitigating the threat, they could take care of that. These have defined uh, limitations and advantages. Make sure you understand which one will help you because I'm a big fan of both of these features, but you need to know that most of the time in grayscale, 
firefighters miss information. They do not they do not realize convection currents are hot. They miss colorized areas because they're not wiping the lens or they're not using their camera appropriately to see the benefit of these features. So let's look at thermal situational awareness from the firefighter and the company officer perspective. Firefighters typically will have a nozzle or a tool in their hand. They're searching, they're fighting fire, they're pulling ceiling, they're doing different tasks. Where the company officer is supposed to be the designated adult who is an overwatch or overseer who's not just watching, but is also working. You see here in survey mode, there's a lot of heat at the end of this container and somebody should get down and not stand up, right? That's usually me, me or my guys. So we understand that if I, my guys are doing something that could harm them and they can't see it, my job is to let them know, hey, that's hot. Because in TI Basic right here, that's a big difference. If you look at this firefighter here versus looking at that picture in the, right there, we see the heat at the end of the container, but most people do not think gray and white is hot. I need you to understand that the NIOSH reports consistently say that firefighters fail to recognize rapidly changing fire conditions. They don't know what they're looking at through the eyes of the camera or the camera is not with them. It's still on the charger of the truck. Shades of gray often fail to make the impact they need to make because when you pull up at a stoplight, it's not three shades of red. I don't expect you to interpret 266 shades of gray under stress when the average human being can only see 30 and the average person under stress can only see four. This is why colorization is important. Understand what these do and what they don't do and use them to your advantage because they're a big they're a big advantage. And this is a quick little side by side comparison of where that firefighter was sitting. You look to the left, that thermal layer is a lot lower and you have more red above that person. Whereas here you've got beautiful gray white convection currents blowing out and you see the convection currents better in grayscale than you do in survey. So like I said, benefits and limitations but survey mode helps me see the problem before i'm in the problem is my favorite thing about it so let's talk about some other uses i spent five years as an arf chief arf stands for already retired firefighter those of you who don't know that airport rescue firefighting in many cases i saw tick use improperly done they would read the spot temperature on the brakes instead of using the infrared spot meter we'd use the tick to find the problem they should use an infrared laser spot meter to see the temperature on the brakes However, survey mode I found was very beneficial for me to look at brakes. Because in this case, this is actually normal heat signatures on the brakes. But when I started seeing abnormal, I started seeing heat coming outside of the rim, around the edges. And it also gave me a beautiful picture of the exoskeleton and the infrastructure of the aircraft. So you can use them for ARF, you can use them for overheated electrical components, overhaul, odors of electrical, burning, more. One of my instructors sent in a great picture of a car that went down an embankment and they had the heated seat on. So when they scanned the car, it looked like these squiggly lines in the seat. That was the heated seat, the wires heating it up. So he knew someone had been sitting in that seat prior to that accident. The rest of the seats had no heat signatures and the heat wasn't turned on. So odds are he was looking for just one person. In this particular example, you can see how well survey mode shows the differences in this aircraft. So it's not just for firefighters. There's many ways you can use these features. Make sure you try it out. If you're not carrying the camera and using it in your daily calls for service and driving around and looking at buildings, you're not really going to get good with it. This is an example of a building fire. We had a fire on the exterior of the building. What I want you to notice in this example is the difference between what you see in TI Basic versus survey mode. Purposely have it in survey mode as I'm walking up. And this happens to be in the Fire Pro 300, obviously. Uh, it, it was the first device to come out with survey mode. So when we come out and look at the side of the building, we can clearly see these heated areas of cardboard and debris and the back side of this masonry block wall. It's really hot, right? No one would disagree that that's pretty warm. 300 degrees apparent temperatures. We know that's an estimate, but in TI Basic, be honest, would you cool that wall off? Would you wet down that pile excessively? Probably not. We just hit the hot spot, hit the hot spots we see, right? So in this example, in survey mode, it makes me think twice about before I leave, what do I need to do, especially the door frame, or anywhere in this building where there are points that he can get through, whether it's a vent, a window, pipe, because if he can hit something and get to the inside of that building, then I can come back later and have a much bigger problem. 
And I don't want to be filling out that paperwork or being interviewed on the news for that either. So this is just one example that would help you if you're using this in your daily calls of service. It doesn't have to be the giant rocking fire. It can be everything from a trash fire, wildland fire, small car fire, it could be overhaul, it could be size up, it could be anything that involves not able to pick up heat with your normal TI basic mode in your standard camera. This is a side-by-side -side picture, so you can see the difference and why this is important. Notice that when we're in TI Basic, the spot temperature is not there. Per NFPA, they remove the spot temperature in newer cameras that meet the 1801 standard. Because firefighters look at that number and think, oh, it's 143 degrees. No, it's not. That's 143 degrees apparent temperature, that little area that it's pointed at. And that's if it's a perfect emissivity of 0.95 to 0.97 that it's calibrated at and it's in a certain ambient temperature range at certain distance, all those variables are controlled, and that's not where a firefighter works. This is a trash pile of cardboard boxes that burn up on the backside of a strip mall building. We don't get to control the variables. We don't get to control all that. We get to show up and fix what we got. So in this case, you can actually see something else that's pretty important, which is the amount of heat around that door frame. That's significant. You know, we don't wanna neglect things that could cause problems later. Make sure you understand what you're seeing, when to use it, when not to use it. This is a great example for you safety officers, RIT crew leaders, incident commanders of what it looks like when you're checking on interior crews. This small house fire it was a kitchen fire where they left food on the stove. Now the fire is extinguished. Look at how much heat's still inside this area where they're doing overhaul. Now ask yourself, look at the ceiling. Look at all the work that's being done. When we switch it to TI Basic, would you give it the same amount of attention as you do right here? See all that colorized area? Watch when we switch to TI Basic. Hmm. I've seen more firefighters ignore that. And then when I show them this, they fix it. They didn't have to be thermography certified. They just realized that that colorized to get their attention. In the world of thermography, a color is called an isotherm. It's an area of interest to get somebody's attention. That's what it's done. Get your attention, not to give you an exact measurement, but to get your attention in the hopes that you fix it and don't miss it. This is also from one of my instructors showing you the benefit of using it during wildland fires. This is a small brush fire. When they're mopping up, you can see areas that are still hot as far as the surface goes. I will caution you, you're dealing with wildland fires. There's lots of variables that can hide things from you like thick mulch and moss and things of that nature. But in this example, it, he quickly finds some areas that need to be taken care of, such as underneath this stump here. Watch what happens when he gets in front of it. Moves it around and you can see a lot of heat underneath there that needs to be dealt with. In truth, those white areas are pushing the edges themselves. So me knowing what I know, I would be cooling anything white. As the Rolling Stones song says, I see a red door, I paint it black. I see anything white, I'm painting it black because I don't want to come back. We want to make sure we take care of it. But that's a great example of using this camera in wildland fires or brush fires and small trash fires. You could use it for that. This one is my favorite one that was just sent to me by a good friend of mine. The reason it's my favorite is it's very subtle and it looks like absolutely nothing. This is a summarized narrative that he sent me. I call this small signature, big problem. The homeowner reported an odor of something burning, but didn't see any smoke or flames. Ask yourself, how many times as a firefighter you've heard that over the radio before you get there? The initial arriving company is unable to locate any problem. The next new company, Captain, is equipped with a Fire Pro 300 and switches to survey mode. This is what he sees on the wall. The breaker for this outlet in this incident did not trip. and The wiring to the outlet melted and started to heat the stud to the point where there's a significant heat pattern in survey mode. Ask yourself this. What would have happened, or what would have been the result if they just didn't find anything, didn't put their hand on the wall to even feel if that was hot at all, they left? What could have happened later? I don't want to even know. But here's the thing. The people of your response district, your citizens, your neighbors, the people you respond to trust you. And when you show up, ask yourself, are you using everything you can to help the public? Because I see these devices left on the truck, number one. I see them not upgraded, number two. Like somebody called me the other day for looking for parts for a K90 Talisman, which is made in 1998. 
still on their fire truck today. Okay. I mean, it's not that hard to get a new camera these days, especially if fire trucks costing what they cost. Thermal imaging cameras are not that expensive. You think about responding to a homeowner who has a problem, maybe a mom home alone while, while her husband's at work or vice versa, and they're upset because they smell something burning in their house. You go through their house and you look and you check everything. And you say, everything's fine. If you smell anything else, call us back. Three in the morning, they don't call you back. The neighbors do. And now they're trapped. On the second floor of their home, pinned down by fire. And we failed them. Now, I'm not telling you you're going to see every problem. But what I consistently see is we don't do a due diligence when it comes to this. We'll do everything else. Force 500 doors, but we won't read 500 pages. I need you to understand that these subtle heat signatures like this, especially if it's in a lath and plaster wall, big problem. Make sure you understand what this means. Get your education and training. We offer all that for free online. It's everywhere. We partner with Seek Thermal to produce even more free resources like what you're watching today so that you can know how to be what we call intelligently aggressive. Now, if you have the new Attack Pro VRS, you'll notice the buttons are the same. So how do we get it to go into survey mode? You press that flashlight button until the spot temperature comes on, then you ignore that. Then you push it again for three seconds and survey mode comes on. Here's the cool thing. If you turn it off and leave it that way currently, it'll come back on in survey mode. So when I say you start early and you use it again late, you can set it for survey mode. And when you get off the truck, it's already there. And then all you got to do is press that button again and hold it to go back to TI basic. So it's easy for you to set it. You don't have to mess with anything. It's already ready for battle. Good to go. If you have the Fire Pro 300, however, you can push the power button and the flashlight button simultaneously and hit it two times and it will get you to survey mode. The manufacturer recommends you push and hold the flashlight button and hold it for three seconds. I don't know too many patient firefighters, so this is kind of your cheat code. If you push the power and the flashlight button, click, 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 you're there. That's it. And it does the same thing. If you turn it off in survey mode, turn it back on, it'll be in survey mode. A word of warning, if you're using this device, please make sure you put it in your radio pocket, you strap it to yourself, don't let it swing freely. Many firefighters are breaking these lenses left and right, and they're like, I don't know why I'm breaking the lens. I'm like, would you strap your iPhone to a lanyard and jump through a window with it? No. The lens is out front. It's the most fragile thing on any camera in the market. Make sure you keep it stowed when you're not using it and pull it out when you do need it because that lens will break on any thermal imaging camera out there. But we need you to know how to use it properly because it's designed so you can wipe it easier that way. Great camera, great life-saving device, has the same detector as the Attack Pro, VRS, and all those models, but it's smaller, it's less insulated, and you don't have the durability you do have of the Attack Pro and Attack Pro VRS models. So put them together, you got a winning combination of firefighters and company officers with decision-making cameras and situational awareness cameras. No other camera on the market gives you that ability than these two together. If you want more free resources of what we offered you today, we've made it easy for you. We have a Google Drive that if you scan on the left, it's a public shared folder. It's no longer just Seek resources, it's all the Insights resources along with the Seek Thermal folder. It has the presentation you're watching today, including the videos are embedded in it. If you scan that QR code, it'll go to me and it'll ask me for permission, click the link, grant you access. The one in the middle is a new link on our website that's Seek, Seek Thermal Resources. It'll have all of our webinars on there. It already has 10 hours worth. After today, once I get the recording from Seek Thermal, I will update the, the actual article. And I'll have this recording along with the VRS recording on there so that you don't have to hunt down and find all of them. You go to one link and there's all your resources. Good to go. Easy to find. I know most people won't go past page one on Google, so we made it even easier. And then you have the YouTube channel that we created that has almost 400 videos organized by playlist. And that particular QR code goes to our YouTube channel. If you're looking for Seek Thermal resources, just go to the Seek Thermal playlist. There's also an investigative mode color palette application channel that you can watch the videos you saw today. And in addition to that, Seek Thermal offers videos on their page, thermal.com. We have a free Facebook page called Tactical Thermal Imaging. You have to answer two questions to join. It's nothing but thermal imaging stuff and first responders and firefighters and EMTs and police officers asking questions. It's not a hunting group. It's an emergency response group. 
But all that is for you, the firefighter, today for free. And here's why. I want you to get you home. I can't do that if I withhold information from you. I want you to get home to your family. I want you to do your job well. I want you to have all the information and resources you can and not have, you know, some reason to say, well, I was never told or no one took the time. I'm taking the time. See, Thermal's taking the time. We're investing in you so you'll invest in the future. Make sure you do that. Take the time to read. Take the time to learn and get out there and train. This is our contact information. My email's at the bottom, phone number's there in the middle, and then my instructors have pages. I got a new uh, instructor page on there. Instructor Reagan Underwood's added his page. We have two Twitter pages. We have an uh, Instagram page, YouTube, TikTok, and we have two LinkedIn pages. We post two to three times a day on many cases of information, education, and events, and Seek Thermal also posts information on our behalf. All of that is for you, free. We post more free resources than anybody else. For one reason, we care about you. We want you to get home. Doesn't matter what brand of camera you use. I'm con I'm concerned about you getting home to your family and using these devices to save citizens and save their lives and save their property. Hopefully, you found this informational information useful today. Um, pray you stay safe. Get out there and do a good job. Enjoy the job. Uh, retirement comes pretty quick. I can I can speak for that. God bless you all. Have a great day, Brent. I'm gonna hand it back to you. Great. Thank you, Andy. Uh, I think you just addressed the the number one question that we were getting, which was where do I find the replay of this webinar? Uh, as you, as Andy mentioned, he'll be posting that on his YouTube channel in full as soon as he gets the recording from me, which will be uh, likely published in the next two days or so. So uh, again, thank you, everyone. Um, regarding Seek products, if you guys want to do a free burn with any of our Thermal imaging cameras, our TAC Pro or our Fire Pro 200 or 300, please visit thermal.com. There's a, a link to register to request one of these demos on the Attack Pro page. Um, just go ahead and, and get that submitted and we'll get you in touch with a rep or a dealer that's got a, a demo unit for you to put it through its paces. So thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Take care.